Hello, welcome to the Full Circle Podcast. This is the first one of the day in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. What up, everybody? Um, it's quarantine buggy. It's uh been, I think, um, maybe three and a half weeks, three weeks of this quarantine shit. Didn't realize I haven't done a podcast in a while because yeah, shit's been weird. But um. Yeah, I wanted to come in and catch up. I had one with, with the homie Strands a few weeks ago, but uh, he had to get some things off his chest, you know? <laughs> and podcasts are the spot to do that. So if y'all haven't, go listen back to that. Go listen back to all of them, because you, you'll follow where I was at life, how I'm going through shit, the blah, 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 blah. But um, yeah, I just wanted to check back in with you motherfuckers, because the reason I'm doing these bitches is because life isn't fucking promised. And not only can this be like a fucking diary for me, it could be ready for a biography or something, anything later on, you know? It's like, I do a lot of music, but that doesn't really explain who I really am as a person. I only get to be characters depending on the genre that I'm playing at that time. But, um, yeah, so... This is the Full Circle Podcast. I always have random fucking people on here. It might be me. It might be people. It might be a half hour. It might be an hour and a half. It doesn't fucking matter, though. I'm going to have a camera soon. I'd say... I don't know. I think this is the 10th or the 11th. I'll have a camera. Camera episodes by episode 25, probably. 25 or 30. That's when we'll get the camera and all. But, um... But, yeah, so, uh... How are you guys? What the fuck have y'all been doing? Sitting at home. Everybody's like really worried about each other. Not even because of the sickness, just because of their brains. <laughs> like people have never just sat home and been alone. When for me, it's so weird because the past two, three years of my life, it's like I was literally preparing myself for this. Because I've just been locked in a studio 24-7 since yeah for th- about three years three and a half years now so it's like my routine did not take one stutter from this whole thing for the exception of performing in ciphers with like when i can go out anywhere but other than that my day-to-day routines waking up making music mixing my shit other people's shit that's literally what i was doing anyway so for me, as far as creation goes, it's dope. Other people want to record more, but that's a little sketchy. I had I did have to pause that because I don't want to link with a bunch of different people right now. It's a little sketchy. Because I don't know where you dirty motherfuckers have been, dude. But, um... <laughs> yeah, but i just been making a lot of music as far as what I was saying in the past po- podcast. How I'm releasing five instrumentals a week. A single a week. A remix a week. An album a month. Yeah, I've been doing that. It's been five months strong of that now. So I think I have 110 or 15 instrumentals. I have like 26 or 7 remixes out now. And 26 or 7 singles. Along with the five, six albums that I've released. So that's another 30 singles if you count it like that. So, And I haven't promoted any of it. Everything that I've been doing, I've just been releasing. I'll post on Instagram and Facebook, hey, here's another one, here's another one, but I'm not sending it in mass text, I'm not getting any placements, and I've never paid for any placements ever before, actually. But I'm not doing any of that with these right now, because in the other podcasts I explain, once I get these out, I'll be able to paint the picture by July, August time. Which means because I started in November, by then that'll be like nine albums straight, a bunch of singles, mad remixes, podcasts included and all that as far as content goes, just just talking, you know? So when I release, when I release all that stuff, that's when obviously I'm going to get the videos done and I already have all the treatments and everything for that set up. So I cannot wait to paint this shit because... Artists are always stuck in this bubble of like, we want to create, but we don't want to do all that extra shit. It feels weird to us. You know, anybody who's selling something that they just genuinely love feels weird about selling it because we can't really put a price to this shit, you know, but that's a thing that 
that were, I guess, our generation had to get over because instead of having a major team and managers and shit, the artist is all that. And in my case, I'm everything. I'm the engineer. I'm I'm everything. And being in a band, too, <clears throat> takes it takes a lot, you know? So talking about having a fucking job, I haven't had a real job for three and a half years. I've been free doing freelance artistic work. So talk about this quarantine with the the unemployment and the money. So I'm good because I'm I'm getting actually more work, but I'm sketchy because and putting a hold on it because I don't want to link with the people and chance getting sick. But the government worked out this non filers, John, so hopefully it fucking works out and they still hook me up. But I don't know. I don't even want to talk about the quarantine because that's what everyone's talking about. You guys know that there's certain things out there. There's certain conspiracies, blah, blah, blah. Do your individual research on all of them because I have my thoughts, but I'm not about to tell them right here for you guys to change your mind because I said something like that. You know, I need you guys to do your own fucking research. There's a shit ton of conspiracies that are tied into it. And just because it's the word conspiracy doesn't mean it's potentially fake. Anything's potentially fake. Conspiracy is literally just a theory. It's like, this is, that's possible type shit, but do your research, yo. I'm not talking about the quarantine at all. But yeah, as far as a consistent working, the other way I survive is throwing shows and shit, and I can't do that either. So that's like a little weird hiccup, but at the same time, as far as my timeline and dropping all of this music and material, that's like playing perfectly into my fucking hands. And I'm still working out and getting healthier. So like I'm almost where I want my body to be. So it's weird how this is playing into my hands. And, and as far as my artistic v vision goes, this is all like perfectly working out for me. But obviously financially and who knows who you would bump into in these situations. But... As far as entertainment, it is really weird. I'll talk about that aspect of it, not the quarantine itself. But for unsigned upcoming musicians, bands, any kind, like myself, I'm not sure if it's going to be good or bad because let's look at it like this. People who throw their own shows. So, like, I'm not a promoter, but this is what I mean. I have to do everything. When I throw a show, I put together great shows based off of talent. So the shows sell themselves. I don't really promote even my own shows. They sell themselves because of the lineups that I pick. But that is a lane that I have to go into. So if I wanted to rent a venue out in Philly, when they're normally probably 700 or 500 whatever they are to rent for the night, they might jump that fucking price to 1500 now. You know, and then when they do that, there's probably obviously in this amount of time, all the shows that got canceled, who knows how many mainstream artists that they had already paid or whether it was through Live Nation or whatever, how any of that works out. You know, a lot of these venues, a lot of these studios are definitely going to close because of because of this. So what I'm getting at is not only are people are people going to be wary to even go out which clearly they are. So I think like pretty much we're fucked for a year. I pretty much really think like as far as like shows and shit, it won't be till next year around this time. If it's cleared up, like that people will be comfortable to go out and fool again. So for me, I kind of just erased that whole aspect, the throwing shows part and ciphers, throwing ciphers, which is what I do. You know what I mean? That's like, what I love, that's how I connect with people in person. But like I said, it's also playing completely in my hands because I am just a creator and I love just making shit. So the fact that I started releasing all of my old shit a couple months ago is so perfect because my goal was to get all this shit out of my computer so I can fucking erase it all, start over whole new editing techniques. I don't I use all stock plugins too, so maybe get a fucking good plugin, maybe. <laughs> you know, I want to it's time to elevate my shit, you know what I mean? That was the thought process. And like I said, I'm always it's always a reminder full circle shit. Tomorrow is not promised. So whenever you think or doubt yourself on something, just remember who gives a fuck? You might like literally you could die right now. 
So I just went and started releasing all my old shit. And dude, and a lot of them got bites. Shit that I thought was super, super corny got bites. Like, couple got bought, couple got bites, couple got big bites, though, you know? So it's really weird. And it only has 30 views on YouTube. Some of them have a couple thousand, like an E40 one. I love that one, but I didn't expect people to be typing E40 type beat because who's really listening to E40 right now, you know? But that's what I'm saying. This shit's weird. You don't fucking know. So, like, I'm releasing beats that I made five, six years ago. Like, I released my first beat I ever made. People just don't know because I'm mixing them in with what I'm with some new beats and the old ones, you know? I'm. I'm just mixing them all up with how I release them. But what I'm saying is because of me starting that five months ago and I'm still have like 200, 300 beats to release and 100 songs that I can release. And the remixes I'm doing week by week. So it is just a constant thing, but I'm still also getting rid of the older stuff. So I was going to be empty by the time July came around, for the exception of an album, because I have collab projects and EPs that I'm releasing. So I was still going to release an album every month, no matter what, until the 2020 was over, to equal like 13 albums the past year and a half. But now that this is happening, taking away from all of the cypher and showtime which takes a lot of fucking extra time away and then all the extra shit that i would just extracurricular shit that i would do and pull up to i'm thinking i'm gonna like triple what i have right now (laughs) as far as music so the remixes i was only gonna do one a week but it's kind of like two or three a week i've been doing and every genre just going all over the fucking place because fuck it so yeah, dude, it's 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 gnarly how it played into my artistic hand. But what I started this with was people don't really know how to be alone. And I do, because I've been doing this. I prepared myself for this lonely fucking lifestyle. And as an artist, any artist or musician will understand what this is. It's just... We just buy ourselves because we want to create a lot. And then it just winds up being that as you get older. But a lot of these motherfuckers who are going day to day. On the go. In that, excuse me, rat race. Like them sitting still without a vacation. Not knowing if they're getting money and blah, blah, blah. Like I... I can't even imagine what they are contemplating as reality. Because <laughs> they have all this time to watch shows and shit, so this is going to be interesting. Are the people that always wanted to create going to create? Are the people that always wanted to get in shape going to do that? Or you know, or are they just going to sit and use this time to just watch bullshit? That's going to be the difference. And that's where that one convo I always get in arguments with, not arguments, but like this, not even disagreements. It's just that they don't understand what I'm saying as far as like the universal basic income and to just to create some sort of a higher morale of society, which would trickle into everything else. So what's the main stress of people? Fucking money, dude. Everybody's stressed about money and blah, 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 blah. So the universal basic income would be if everybody, no matter what, gets $1,000 a month. Make it too. Fuck it. That covers most people's rent. but Because, like, dude, $1,000 doesn't cover people's rents, car payments, and all that other shit. Electric. Like, and all that shit. So 2 k to everybody. And the people that are good are going to use that 2 k for something else, which goes back into the economy. The people who are broke might want to just save that shit up. The people who have a lot of money might just want to save it or donate it. It doesn't fucking matter. The point is, right now in society, money is paper. It's fucking paper, dog. The government can straight up print it. And the world is run by military power, which is why America has been in fucking charge. So, like, yeah, I understand there's different forms of currency, but at the end of the day, no one's trading fucking gold. Like, us, people to people, we don't have any real currency. It's paper or digital. 
which means it can just be created out of thin air, which means anybody essentially could be fucking billionaires, which means that all of society could level up and fucking be a different fucking thing than this Neanderthal that we're doing right now. And just by that little bit, giving everybody a thousand a month or two thousand a month consistently, not during a pandemic, consistently opens that time. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the idea that people are just going to sit around is bonkers because right now everybody's off work, but everybody has to sit at home. If everybody was off work and didn't have to sit at home and there were still festivals and all this shit going on with this two thousand dollars a month. Bro, there would be so many more happy people because they would be able to do what they want. They would have the time to say, fuck it, I want to live this lifetime. We don't know what the fuck it is when we're going to die. I want to waste my life sitting on the fucking beach, barely just paying rent and just drinking beers every day type shit. Some people might be like, I'm going to invest this and try to play the money game, but at least I have money. I'll always have that, you know? Then you'll have people who are just going to use the time to create, like a motherfucker like me, who would just make music and, and do all that shit, you know? But it would be a reality where everybody could make their dream a reality to some extent. I want a trampoline, bro. Uh, I got that check next month and I'm good. Fuck it, I'm buying a trampoline. Like, <laughs> stup- stupid little shit like that. And we're humans, like... We can create everything. We, that we're not going to run out of fucking shit like that. We should switch over to fucking solar and all that shit. I, I, I didn't want to get on a hippie rant right now, but, but like, I just, when I tell, talk to people about universal basic income, they're like, well, where's this money going to come from? And I just don't get how people can't grasp the concept that we make the fucking money, dude. We make it. They took all the silver out of quarters for a reason because people were melting quarters down and it was worth, the silver itself was worth more than the amount of the quarter 25 cents that they were using. Like there's, there's reasons there's no gold in the shit. We don't have any physical things. And this two to four trillion dollars for this pandemic, where the fuck do you think it came from, buds? They added some zeros in the fucking computer. That's it. Now, if they did that, would that take our the quality of the dollar down? Would that make the rest of the country go into inflation? How would that weigh with other countries and shit? Dude, that's what I'm saying. If, the, if it's based off military power and shit like that, you would have to tell these motherfuckers like, hey, we're doing a new world order. Everybody in the world gets this amount of money and this is how much it is worth. You're not allowed to make gas thirty fucking thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars a gallon, just because everybody's making twenty to two thousand dollars more a month. You know, like inflation would be a law. <laughs> if you wanted to do it in a tax thing, take one percent of tax away from every other thing that we're taxed on and make a new tax bracket. There's that. It's our money anyway. And it's not even real anyway. So all this stress and anxiety. That these people, we, us, live with when we're stressed about no money or stressed about people near us with no money that want to take our money, that could all disappear. Because we don't have the stress of lions and tigers hunting us. Well, well, us, but other people have that. But. but you know what I'm saying? We don't have those different stresses that we had back in the day. We have a different stress right now. There's rat race. To what? To nothing. Like, it's a weird power thing dude it sucks we really could all like we could all be so happy and doing what we want i think we'll get there i have faith that's one of the reasons i'm doing this podcast too because a rant like this who fucking cares if it gets three views dude one person might hear this shit and be like yo he's fucking right i see this utopia that he's talking about Like, I know what he means, and this might stem in their brain and carry over for the rest of the way that they live, you know? Like, that's, I'm not doing this shit just for fuck, for, like, for me, for views and shit. I'm doing this shit literally to connect with people and hopefully leave some sort of legacy behind to the people that I did touch while I'm here so that they still have me when I'm gone. Like, I wish I had some podcast shit with 
Cash or just some more music. I wish he came and recorded with me. I wish I had more shit with Jimmy. I wish I that I saw more footage of Jose and a lot more of Nick, dude. Like, I, I would do anything to have any sort of content of them. There's probably so much unreleased Michael Jackson, Mac Miller, all those motherfuckers. There's probably so much shit that we haven't seen. And on top of that, there's so much shit that probably should have been documented that wasn't. So that's a, I'm a documentator, whatever that's called. Like, I want to try and get as much shit documented as possible. Because I do want to make a gnarly fucking biography movie too. Like I want to, I want to do like a fucking epic shit, some epic shit. To, cause, cause this story that I went on connected with the story that, that the people are involved in in this. It's crazy, and I know we're all gonna end up where we want to. And that's part of the reason I'm dropping all this material too. Because if I died five months ago it wouldn't have been okay, you know, because I hadn't, everything was just in my computer. I had a, I had a list of how I wanted people to drop shit had I died. And then when I really went through the list, there was way too much. No, I couldn't put that responsibility in anybody's hands and they wouldn't have made it sound right. I'm a fucking perfectionist with my shit. So I was like, fuck it. I got to do all this. Like that's my mission now. Get in shape, drop all this shit, at least before I fucking die. <laughs> because I never know when I'm gonna. And that's what I'm fucking doing. And in turn, now I feel like... like no, I'm not saying I'm ready to die at all. But I'm saying, like, I feel like I've done something now. Because up until that point, I didn't realize how little amount of music I had released. I had done a lot of ciphers, done a lot of things, a lot of shows... But when it came to like real music, what's on iTunes and Apple and shit, I only had like four or five songs and then my band's album. So I was like, oh, from 2018 to now, two, two years, I have only released really five songs and only two, three videos. So when I looked at that in the past two years, yeah, you see me now, I'm dropping 10 videos a week. <laughs> I'm not fucking around now. And I'm, and I'm painting on top of it. Like, I'm not just dropping what's old and picking out what's old and mixing that. I'm also creating shit in this time span and dropping that in, the, in between it. I'm just not telling you guys what was made when. You know, obviously, besides the remixes, you can tell the remix when they're made, depending on if the song's new. And I've been dropping remixes the day they're made. Like, I'm doing some, some unprecedented shit, dude. Drake, the Tusi slide, bro, he leaked it. I remixed it the night of the leak and I was like, all right, I'm going to drop it tomorrow morning. It was like 12, 1230. Went on YouTube, Drake dropped Tusi Slide, the official video. I was like, fuck, now I got to finish mixing this and drop it right now. <laughs> Dude, I dropped a remix an hour after. I was going to drop the Tusi Slide remix before he officially dropped it. Like, that's crazy shit. Who the fuck can do that? It's 2020, dude. I'm dropping remixes like Lil Wayne on some on the drought type shit. I'm dropping remixes an hour after they're dropped. Like 2020 is crazy, bro. And I'm doing this shit all from my bedroom. Everything you hear is from my fucking bedroom. Straight up. So I've I'm really happy about where it's at. But again, like I said, I'm I'm trying to just get all this out because I know my every shit time my sound is improving and it's really time to level up with all the shit so straight up with the stimulus check i'm copping a fucking camera dude and that's a wrap that's a fucking wrap when that happens i've been using imovie for all the shit anybody who edits knows imovie is fucking terrible bro i need adobe premiere in my life that's that shit that's the old school TV tech shit. But yeah, I just wanted to touch in for a little bit. See how you motherfuckers were doing. Uh, if you guys ever want to fucking hear some, me remix something or s talk about a subject on a podcast or some shit or you want to shout out, fucking comment. 
Comment your shit. Comment what you want and shit. Um, I'm pretty fucking stoned. I was going to talk a little more about stuff, but I'm not going to lie. I feel like making some fucking music right now, so. I'm going to make some fucking music talking about it. Like, that rant got me really hype. I feel good right now, so. And if you guys listen back, there's a couple podcasts where I'm not okay. <laughs> so that's why these are cool, too, because, like, the numbers, I think, three through five were a really rough patch. Six, seven, climbed, climbed out. Eight, nine, had friends. And then I think this is 10 or 11. So this is going to be interesting to listen back to these later on in life and see where I am and see who I thought I was and see how close I thought I was, but how fucking far I am, you know? It's like documentation, and I want you motherfuckers to be a part of it. But, um, I love you guys. It's Buggy. Again, I'm dropping shit every fucking week. Stay in touch with me, dude. Let's link when this Corona shit's done. I drank Corona last week, too. I'll see y'all soon. Love you.